Hi, I'm Kirk Boyle. Um, I, I teach English at the University of North Carolina, Asheville. And um, my late wife, Amber Lieb, had a really cool uh, CF related tattoo uh, that I'd like to share the story of today. I am Isabel Stenzel Burns. I'm 50 years old and I have cystic fibrosis. I am 18 years post double lung transplant. Hello, CFRI podcast community. My name is Trey LaRosa. I am 27 years old. I have cystic fibrosis. I live in Arlington, Virginia. Um, today, I will definitely be talking about my experiences with CF in conjunction with my CF tattoos because my CF tattoos are in inextricably linked to my CF story. My name is Carolyn Baker. I am 65. I have cystic fibrosis. I also have a son that has cystic fibrosis. He is now 44. Um, he was diagnosed at six weeks. I was diagnosed at 32 years old. Hello, I'm Becca. I'm 33, almost 34. And I've had CF since I was born, but I wasn't diagnosed until I was six weeks old. I'm Diane Shader Smith. I'm Mallory's mom. And she surprised me when she came home one day and showed me her tattoo, which I was horrified by. I kept thinking that needles in her arm was gonna cause some sort of an infection, but she told me that she and her brother had decided to do this together. My name is Dr. Jennifer Taylor Kauser, and this is my tattoo story. Uh, I was born in 1972, so I am of the generation that went to cystic fibrosis summer camp at starting at the age of 11. And I loved it. It was life affirming. I felt so connected to people who really understood what I was going through. And when I met Amber, um, she uh, she had two tattoos, um, I think, from uh, po pivotal points in her life. One was in high school. She had a tattoo of a, a roulette wheel uh, that was a, that doubled as a sun on her ankle. And then in college, she she got a phoenix um, on her lower back. And, um, she really wanted to get a tattoo, uh, about her, about her transplant. Um, uh, but it took a while. I didn't start having lung issues until I was in my early twenties. And that's when I actually started to feel very comfortable with, uh, CF and talking about it and not feeling so self-conscious and wanting to be more included in the CF community. I actually have three CF tattoos and one that's kind of a half CF tattoo, but I'll explain why um, in a little bit. Um, my son was getting ready to go in for a transplant and was um, told that he would need to live not at home for several months so that he needed to do fundraisers, which would make it easier to live and not um, strap their financials. Uh, the, uh, wasn't until 2017, in fact, uh, when she was turning 37 that I decided to, uh, push the issue and, and set up an appointment, um, for her, for her birthday. So one of the gifts was a consultation. Uh, and so this is what I wrote. I, I wrote this to, um, the, Sacred Lotus Tattoo um, Shop here in, in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I'm writing on behalf of my spouse who is celebrating a birthday on August 26th. For some time, she has talked about getting a tattoo of a lung decorated with colorful flowers and fauna like a cicada. She received a double lung transplant 12 years ago, hence the lung. She identified your shop and Kimmy Ledger's work in particular as piquing her interest. And then when I was pulling entries for her book, Salt in My Soul, I found this and I wanted to share it. Some of it's in the book and there's a little bit more here. I want to get a stick and poke tattoo of the letters LXV, 65 in Roman numerals. Kayla's brother, Michael, got that tattooed on his inner arm and it looks sick. And I would want to do it on my inner wrist, but a lot smaller so it could be covered with bangles or a watch. I Facebook messaged him to ask how he would feel if I stole his idea. And he was like, it's totally fine. Art isn't owned. I think it would be great if you got it. So maybe LXV will become the new, more discreet tattooed symbol of CF. So um, friends of his got together and they had decided um, on a couple different 
um, fundraisers. One of them was a tattoo fundraiser. Um, a real good friend of theirs is uh, owns his own tattoo place, Golden Owl. <laughs> and he had set up for them to do a tattoo fundraiser. So he drew 20 different roses, um, ones to go along with the 65 rose story. And so um, stayed with that theme, all, all roses. And him and his partner tattooed all day long and um, got the tattoos done. So I have several tattoos that represent the things that are most important in my life. And for a number of years, I've been trying to figure out what could I get to represent CF. I wanted it to represent the central role that CF plays in my life, but I also didn't want it to encroach upon the stories of those who actually live with cystic fibrosis and their families. Around the time when I started having lung issues is when I really first started wanting my first tattoo, which is the word breathe on my right shoulder. And I waited 10 years to make sure that I really wanted it. I wanted that exact word and that exact placement. I didn't want to get it and then regret it. And during the process, I was not enjoying it. And I was like, I'm never going to get another tattoo again, even though I love this one. And then I fell into the stereotype of getting addicted to tattoos because it was on like 10 to 15 minutes later, oh, my next tattoo is going to be my mutation and it's going to be on my wrist. The first CF tattoo I got is a purple rose um, with the Latin quote, doom spiro sparrow, which means while I breathe, I hope. I think this is kind of a common expression in the CF world. I think a lot of people with CF are familiar with this expression. I believe it was said by Cicero who invented the concept of rhetoric. Um, but I don't know if that's actually true. I've looked it up a bunch, but, and when I went to get my tattoo, I, I looked up the Latin spelling and expression a, a million times to make sure I didn't get a fake expression tattooed on me. Um, but that's a, that, that expression has really resonated with me for, for quite some time. And there's a little bit of a cool component too. I like the Latin component because I'm it's Italian by the, as evidenced by my last name, La Rosa. Um, which means the rose in Italian. And so growing up before I ever, you know, still a child, I had always heard of 65 roses as associated with cystic fibrosis. So I thought it was, um, I thought, I actually thought the rose thing came from my last name first. Didn't realize it was just like an expression in the CF world. So uh, I was really, you know, that was the first tattoo I got. And then in 2021, it hit me. So until it's done, to represent my personal commitment to continue to do CF care and research until there is a cure for every single person with CF. Purple, of course, for CF awareness, and then the rose to represent people with CF and their families until it's done for every single person. Um, as I grew up, uh, some of the older girls in the camp um, started to pass away. So even though there was a lot of love and care and laughter, there was a lot of loss as well. Um, so we became, our cabin became uh, the oldest girl's cabin, which was hard to believe at 15, 16, 17, 18, we were the oldest girls. Um, so one year, I also was in the hospital quite a bit in and out, and I started a t-shirt painting business. Um, just something to do while in the hospital. And I sold the t-shirts to nurses and doctors. Um, but I started to paint t-shirts with a bunch of flamingos on them. And uh, just because it was easy to draw and it was kind of fun and, and beautiful to paint, to draw flamingos with different colors. So I gave those t-shirts, matching t-shirts to all the girls in my cabin. So then we decided that our cabin name was the Flamingos. But the tattoo took a while. Uh, she had to do three sittings uh, to complete the tattoo. Uh, it was quite involved. Uh, the Amber had collected uh, all sorts of inspiration. Um, there was one kind of image of a, of a pair of lungs that had um, uh, flowers in it and, uh, and some various other items. And, um, and so they designed it together and then uh, over three sittings, it, it all came together and, and I think it was on February 18th of the following year of 2018 when, when it was complete. The tattoos were um, all fur roses, 65, and then he was charging 
$65 per tattoo. And then that would, he would do, donate that to his some fundraiser. So, and they even did some um, bake sale, they had bake sale stuff there and, and that. It was a pretty good turnout. Um, we didn't think there would be very many people there, but there was a lot of people there. So um, it, the Flamingos became sort of the cool girl's cabin, if, if I may be honest, and uh, just symbolized our survival, our strength, um, our delicacy. You know, we were delicate, but also, um, you know, pink and cool. Um, but the second tattoo I got is the phenylalanine compound. Um, I, you know, I have two, two copies of the, the Delta F uh, 508 uh, mutation of CF. So I got the phenylalanine tattooed on me, kind of, not as a joke, but um, kind of as a joke that it's replacing the missing phenylalanine in my DNA. Um, but of course, I don't mean it in that way. It's, it, the main inspiration is that I actually have a chemistry degree because I studied biochemistry and uh, did CF research for about five years after college. So I really like the idea of having the chemistry component of CF um, tattooed on my skin. And then I really liked how my mutation looked. And what's cool about my mutation is that my, I have the same one on both sides. So both my mom and dad gave me the Delta F508 mutation. And I, you know, I was like, it's very important to me. And I think what kind of popped up more so with the mutation now is the Trikafta too. Like, even though I already wanted the mutation that, you know, if you have a certain one, you can be on track after and that's done a world of wonders for me and made me so much healthier. So I got to be the first one to be tattooed and mine, I picked the one that's, um, it's a, like an abstract 65 um, for the 65 roses and then uh, has a green stem. Um, not too big being my first tattoo, didn't want to go crazy. Um, and then the name that I had, um, his Damien's name and the date above and the and below, I had that done about a month later after Damien had his transplant. So to kind of finish it off. The interesting thing is then Micah didn't show me his and I didn't know he had gotten it. But one day I realized it was 80 degrees and he had a sweatshirt on. And I said, why are you wearing a sweatshirt? And he trembled with his lip and he said well I don't think you're going to want me to take it off and I said well why not and then he revealed he had the big huge thing of roses on his inner wrist and he said he and Mallory decided to do it together so of course even though I was horrified and angry I was really touched that the brother sister love came through in this permanent way and uh, and then in 1995 or so, after I had become a counselor, camp shut down because of cross infection. Um, so it was a huge loss for me. And um, I think it was 1991 when, when I decided to um, get a tattoo of a flamingo on my back scapula, just because I wanted to honor that special little club that meant so much to me. Um, something pink and delicate and beautiful. Um, and my twin sister, Anna, was willing to get a tattoo with me. But as twins, of course, we had to be different. So I think one of us had a flamingo over water and another one of us just had a regular flamingo. Um, I can't remember because I can't see my tattoo. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, the flamingos uh, live on and they continue to kind of be an inspiration to me as I grow older and remember where I come from. It was a, a beautiful way to keep something so temporary permanent. Um, so it's, a, it's in the shape of a lung. Uh, the, the airways are, are kind of stems. And then her four favorite flowers are, are featured in, in the tattoo. Um, there's the poppy. And she loved bright orange poppies. And then the peony, uh, the big pink flower. Uh, this was something her grandmother had, some peonies growing. And, and roses. She always liked roses. She always loved getting flowers. Um, I did not give her enough flowers. I wish I would have given her more flowers. Uh, but she loved the rose. And then chicory, which is what the, the blue colored flowers are. Although chicory is kind of a purplish flower. Um, it's tough to get the exact color, but but she enjoyed the the blue. Um, 
And then the third CF tattoo I got is not technically a CF tattoo. It's a, it's a personal tattoo, um, but it's actually my sister's handwriting. I'll show you here and then I'll, I'll post some pictures. Uh, my sister passed away in March of 2018 from chronic rejection after her second um, lung transplant. But she, Alyssa was my best friend and um, it, it obviously was devastating to, to lose her for, for me and my parents and, and a lot of other people who knew her. Going backwards to when I got my breed tattoo, something that helped me not back out was that my nephew also got a tattoo and he got a tattoo of a rose, which signifies the 65 roses or cystic fibrosis for me, his auntie. So that, that means a lot too, that someone so close to me got a tattoo for me. And a lot of people will just see a rose and not really know what it means. And I kind of like how there's like the, the actual secret behind meaning of, meaning of it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm happy with, I'm very happy with the tattoos and I, I like how important they are to me. And I am good with people asking them, you know, or asking about them. Um, but yeah, they're, you know, CF is my life and this is me. So these tattoos are definitely personal. I never really planned on getting a tattoo. It, um, and and act, actually had said out loud many times that I would never get one. But after the, this all came up and they were doing this fundraiser and I had thought about it. And then when we turned the corner and we seen all the support and all the help and everything and and everybody was so excited you know, to, to help him, you know, get what he needed. And, you know, you think of all the support that he's had through his life, but at the time when he needed friends to step up and they were all kind of right there, you, you get, you get kind of, you know, caught up and, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. It didn't hurt as bad as I thought, but it was, it was, uh, it, it's made you feel proud, you know, to, to be part of it, I think. CF is caused by this genetic quirk that we cannot control. Um, I, a lot of people with CF have a lot of scars. I, I do not. My sister had tons of scars. She had um, belly scars and chest scars, and you know, she, she had her veins were you know she 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 had a lot of hard time. Like Alyssa was far sicker than I've ever been. Um, but I can control what I put on my body, and I can't control what's contained in my DNA, but I can control what's on my body. And the idea of putting CF and the other tattoos I've put on my body is kind of a way for me, I think, uh, to take control of my situation for something that is out of my control. My sister never had tattoos, but my sister very, very much loved fashion. And I really think that was my sister's attempt to take control of something that she could not control. Um, very much like my attempt to control what I cannot control by, you know, presenting, putting these things that are so inextricably linked to my lived experience and my identity on my body. And I think that that's, um, to me, it's it's sort of like this concept of putting, having a like an embodiment of something that I think about a lot and that really influ influences my life. So that's why my tattoos mean quite a bit to me. And, uh, but I, I, I will say not to end on that kind of note, but um, yeah, Amber was a very private person. She was very introverted, uh, but people would always compliment her on this on this tattoo, which she she wore uh, loudly and, and and proudly and boldly, um, even in the hospital at the end. Nurses uh, all commented on how how beautiful that the, the tattoo was, and and they'd say, "Oh, that's so pretty," and then I'd be like, "Yeah, it's in the shape of a lung." And then they'd take a second look and be like, "Oh my goodness, that is so neat. That's so creative." Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, a well thought, tat uh, well thought out tattoo, uh, indeed.